Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. First of all, happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Hopefully you're staying dry in a rather wet, miserable, at least cold Northern California. My name's Tom Holmes. I'm the Director of Enterprise Solutions at Tangent. Now hopefully by now you've received your pizza, perhaps into your second or third slice. And as you settle in uh, to learn a little bit more about Dayterra's high-performance software-defined storage on Fujitsu servers, there's a few items that I'd like to, to cover. First of all, I'd like to draw your attention to the chat box. Um, the main purpose of this chat box is to ask some qu uh, questions that, that come to mind during this presentation. And actually, we've allocated a few, a few moments at the end to get to them, and we'll get to them uh, as many of them as we can. The main purpose of that chat box, however, is if you're having some issues with your pizza. Hopefully, uh, like I said, everybody's received their pizza and enjoying their pizza. But if you do have some issues with it, let us know, uh, and we'll make it up to you in some way, shape, or form. Please also note that today's presentation will be available to download, uh, along with the Fujitsu and Deterra solution brief. So feel free to download that information after the presentation and socialize it with your data center teams, and then reach out to Tangent, and we can consult on how we might be able to help modernize in your data center with some of the technologies that we'll be discussing. Now, we're absolutely delighted to have with us today Richard McCormick, Head of Product Solutions for Fujitsu America, and Bill Vasari, Head of Systems Engineering for Deterra, who you'll hear from in, in just a moment. But before I hand the baton over to Richard, I'd like to share a little information about Tangent. We're a 30-year-old business, and we're based in Burlingame, California, and we really specialize and have specialized in integrated data center solutions. And we really pride ourselves on the partnerships uh, that we're able to make. And we're able to bring the best of class technologies together to provide an end-to-end -end integrated solution. Now, we're really fortunate to have Data and, uh, and Fujitsu here today because we really believe that the perfect combination of a modern software approach coupled with an enormously successful, stable, global hardware provider. The solution we're going to showcase today really brings the best software and best hardware together to help, some, help solve some of those really tough and difficult problems with enterprise storage. So, it is my absolute pleasure pleasure to introduce Richard McCormick. Richard, over to you. Thank you, Tom. Would help, of course, if I took myself off mute. Um, that's wonderful. Thanks for in the introduction. Uh, as it is Valentine's Day, I took the liberty of inviting my spouse to this presentation so she could get some free Valentine's pizza on behalf of Tangent. Apparently, that was not an acceptable solution for my Valentine's Day uh, gift. So I'm going to register a complaint, I think, to Tangent, that you're not taking care of my wife uh, properly, even though it was her that decided that pizza on behalf of Tangent was not a good Valentine's present, nothing to do with you. But, uh, <laughs> note that one down for anyone in the audience. Uh, apparently, pizza does not work to satisfy spouse on Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if she was in the market, though, for service, she'd be very interested to hear what I'm having to say, and I'm excited to be on the call today along with uh, my good friends over at Tangent and Deterra to talk about what's going on here at Fujitsu and especially in the service space. And basically what we're going to talk about today is our uh, Primer G x86 server family designed to run data services, designed to run uh, Deterra type uh, operations. And hopefully when we get some Q&A as we're going through, you'll, you'll really dig into some of the details. But let me jump right in. My name is Richard McCormack. I'm Head of Product Solutions here at Fujitsu America. I put my uh, Twitter tag down there as well, and you feel free to e email me or, of course, Tom over at Tangent as well. He, he knows how to get hold of me if you've got any questions. And I'm going to take you through a little bit on what really allows these engines to drive the Deterra software solution uh, so well. And let me see if my uh, next slide button works perfectly or not. Yes, it does. So. We build uh, servers really designed to run these data services from a number of key points of view. First of all, on the left-hand side, with versatility in mind to run uh, different enterprise core services. And as you may or may not be able to see on this tiny graphic, there's a number of shapes and styles and sizes of our server family. Everything from simple tower-based servers to very dense rack-based servers. As a customer 
of, of uh, Fujitsu Prime EG as a partner with Tangent. You have full access to this range of different platforms, as I said, from rack mount to towel mount, full range of different devices. And then if you're purely in the scale out mode, the range of really dense scale out devices at the top of the chart, and then a few devices that are kind of unique to the marketplace that we actually build really specifically with a lot of high availability features based in mind that's on the right hand side of the chart. Uh, what we propose here always with Tangent and with Deterra is nearly always on the left hand side of the chart and the top are dense servers, but we do have some other options as well for you. So a full range of different server products designed to run uh, data services software to the maximum capability. Now, we brand these products under the name of uh, Primogy. That's the main brand we use, uh, efficient and agile x86 servers. And we're really looking to cope with modern, fast IT solutions like the one we're putting together here with Deterra and Tangent so you can install these new hyper-converged infrastructure offerings, running software services on top of them very easily. But we do also recognize that you may have existing IT environments, either a standard traditional IT stack that we refer to here as robust IT, all on premise, all doing one application, and maybe you've even got some legacy servers such as these Spark ones on the right. We make sure, of course, that we're able to offer that full portfolio of different devices. And one of the standard questions we often get on a call like this is, thanks, Richard, for telling us about these new servers. Sounds interesting, but I've already got servers from Dell or who knows who already installed, can I run up my Deterra application on that mixed server environment? How does that work? And I think that's a great question because uh, I know the answer is a really good one on the software side of things for the guys as well. So that, that's a good question to ask in future. But definitely we're assuming we're coming at your data centers with full knowledge and full awareness that you've got existing server devices in there already. And we need to fit along those server devices, work well with them in that environment and provide full service and support alongside your existing installed base of devices. We build these servers really to power any workload, as it says, but most specifically to drive data services for applications in this space, in the software-defined uh, storage space. Really ideal servers down at the bottom end of the market in SMB, but the real power of the platform, the area that I want to speak most about today is in that core business and applications that really demand a, a high data throughput. We build these rack servers with just fabulous efficiency in terms of the amount of power and cooling they've got with excellent performance characteristics. I'll show you some good proof points of this in a minute from industry standard benchmarks we're running where we're proud to be number one in many of these cases. And then really test ourselves in the middle of the chart around the high performance and technical computing platform. So we're absolutely sure as you install these servers, you're really going to be able to drive your software stack, drive your software-defined storage to its absolute maximum in terms of CPU utilization, the bandwidth of the server itself, and how it can consume uh, I.O. rate out to, out to the different storage devices that will be installed. And of course, all the time, as it says on the right-hand side, understanding that we need to do this in a mission-critical environment. We're building new servers to run. 7x24 with a very, very high uptime, and we have excellent management and service tools on top of that to enable you to run this with very minimal staff, run them in a simple lights-out environment, get maximum benefit from those different servers. So we build it with these four pillars around the quality of the products we're building. We're a Japan manufacturing company. Fujitsu is a Japanese headquartered entity. We're building these servers out of our factory um, in Japan gives us great quality advantages as we bring these devices uh, into the country, of course. We're a full end-to-end -end supplier, so it's our own engineers building these devices, R&Ding these devices in our factory in Japan, and then bringing it um, into uh, the United States, where Americans like me and Tom are able to talk to you about what's going on. We're not just building it with that high quality. We're building it with the efficiency and agility I mentioned uh, early on, but also really, really importantly, we're able to build these solutions fully integrated for you. So as you go to Tangent, you ask for one of these solutions, we're actually able to get it custom configured and custom built for you in the factory and then fully integrated. So when it arrives on your premise, you're able to plug in and go with a really fast bring up time. That's absolutely key to our overall 
uh, value proposition. Now, we don't just claim performance leadership, as you can see on the performance chart on our own. We're a big believer in benchmarks. Here we are, I'm working in some of the benchmarks in the uh, web space with JBB benchmarks, uh, really testing out our I.O. performance with some of the benchmarks in the virtualization space as well. And as of towards the end of last year, we were holding uh, number one uh, benchmark positions with our rack-mounted servers in a number of these different spaces. I think it was like 18 or 21 individual benchmarks we were holding number one in. These were just two of the most recent ones where we're holding that world record. So we're very happy to be able to back up these claims with some individual performance numbers. Of course, we don't do this alone. We're happy here on this call with our good friends at Deterra with Tangent leading the way with us as well. We fully back them up with a complete Fujitsu value proposition of our maintenance services, professional managed and cloud capabilities, and of course, a number of different partner products that we need from an operating system point of view around the whole server family to make everything work. And then we, Fujitsu, are responsible for bringing that big red blob down the bottom, that red Fujitsu business-centric uh, x86 server, the Primogy, really out to market with you. We're very proud of the services we can offer here in North America, and just an excellent level of different service levels and service offerings. We know some of you are keen for us and Tangent to do all of this for you, so you can almost outsource everything to us. We're able to offer that contract. We're able to take on in our contract even products that we didn't provide to you, so you can use us as a single throat to choke and a one-stop shop for your service and support needs, and of course offer all the normal maintenance and recovery services you would need for devices like this, everything from extending your warranty and uplifting it right down to on-site spares and four-hour response for any mission-critical needs uh, you've got uh, on your site, and of course, standard warranty with none of these services if that you want, and then backed up again in conjunction with Tangent by a range of other professional services around the health check, implementation, and architecture services as well. If you're not sure how to implement these devices, if you're not sure of the best way to set up or even the architecture needed, you can simply call ourselves and Tangent. We'll be happy to come on down and guide you through this uh, with our professional services team and show you how best to set it up and then take you on with a solution contract which allows us to maintain and look after the servers uh, into their life through the multiple years you'll actually have them in production. Now, you wouldn't be alone in working with us uh, in this area. We've got customers all over the world uh, already working on this in areas from as far away as, um, uh, as uh, Asia and Europe, but here in North America specifically, customers in healthcare in the bottom right-hand corner of the chart, in public sector around the U.S. government and state and local, as you can see, some of the different regional police forces and government organizations are all over the country here in the states are using this. In retail, you'll see our devices in as broad a range of uh, end users as our friends over at Petco. My kids always love going in there and buying goldfish on a day-by-day -day basis and then getting hold of those uh, Fujitsu server devices and, and desktop devices to actually check us out on that side. So you see us in a very wide range of different uh, service and deployed environments in customers all over the world and especially in North America where we're able to bring up these solutions and really help them out to do this, do this kind of work. And then lastly, just uh, uh, to give uh, my good friends at doTERRA a chance to tell you more about the core of this offering, which is their excellent software solution. We're really proud of the fact that we've been able to build our server portfolio designed to run data services applications, such as the ones they'll tell you all about. I think you'll agree the offerings have got some really cool state-of-the-art features and innovations around service and support, features that allow us to get the nth degree of performance out of the benchmarking to really drive those high-performance applications uh, at maximum possible efficiency. And then we're able to back all this up from a Fujitsu point of view with a full range of service and support options all over North America, right here where I am physically in not very sunny Sunnyvale. It's actually raining outside of my sunny office right now but we're able to do this whole, all the way across North America, United States, and Canada from a wide range of Fujitsu badged uh, service and support staff uh, all over the area uh, with local depots and local support able to come on site and help you out with this um, at a moment's notice. And with that, I believe if I'm right, I'm able to hand right over now to my good friends over at uh, Tetera. Great. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate the background on the Fujitsu products. Very exciting stuff. So my name is Bill Barsari. I lead the system engineering team, uh, sales engineers for Deterra. 
And I wanted to talk about uh, the Deterra data services platform and, and how we're defining enterprise uh, storage based on, on servers like the Fujitsu Primergy. So as we look at the software-defined storage space, and more particular, uh, enterprise software-defined storage, Deterra set out to build a scale-out system that really gave customers the access to that cloud-like model. Um, we focused on being able to deliver tier one high performance, uh, but also maintaining the critical enterprise features that were required so that as customers are evaluating this transformation to the next generation data center, they didn't have to give anything up. And that's something that we hear constantly from our customers, uh, that they're, they're looking for solutions that move them forward and not move them back. And we designed it in such a way that we can really bring in new technology very rapidly. And working with Fujitsu has, has been fantastic because they have a, a broad uh, technology portfolio. And it's very easy for us to onboard their technology, and we're working with them on, on future options. So we run on secure, high-performance servers like the Fujitsu Primergy. And we can also offer uh, advanced automation capabilities, uh, leveraging techniques around machine learning. And all this comes together to bring uh, OPEX savings to customers of over 70%. So as we start talking about the, the software defined, there's a clear path in the storage world. Uh, we started off in a, in a world of disk arrays. Uh, Clarion led the way with a dual head architecture. Um, the thing about storage is it always has to work. And so how do you deliver high availability? Uh, traditional technologies were based on having uh, HA pairs. And so that model was very effective for about 30 years. And we've seen a number of different companies throughout those 30 years bring the, that uh, technology to the front and, and successful deployments across uh, everything. When it comes to uh, the software to find, there was an attempt to bring that concept of this dual head architecture uh, into software on servers. But the first attempts uh, suffered a number of problems. Uh, they had problems around performance. They had problems around reliability. Um, uh, I don't want to name any specific names, but uh, it, the, the first generation of SDS technologies uh, definitely had uh, challenges in the marketplace. And then we saw that the hyperscalers, the, the Amazon, the Azure, uh, they were able to craft software-defined storage, that's how they run it internally, uh, to meet their needs. And they really proved that, that this is possible. Uh, they invested a lot of money to build these. They're very specialized for their on-prem nature. But at the same time, they've been very, uh, very successful in the marketplace in terms of driving capabilities and uh, providing storage for their additional services like Amazon DC2, uh, the, the Google Compute Cloud, and so forth. Now, Deterra comes in as a second-generation on-prem SDS solution. So we can really capture the enterprise requirements, the enterprise performance, deliver that as software on Primergy servers for uh, individuals transitioning or, or modernizing their data center. So how we get there, you know, we can take advantage of the capabilities of the, the Fujitsu offerings. And, and the features we bring to the table are around data automation, enterprise performance, rapid technology adoption, data center awareness, and predictive operations. We talk about data op, uh, automation as a way of, of rethinking how the applications and the storage work together. That enterprise performance, we have to be able to deliver uh, expectations, and, and not only for today, but also for the future around latency and throughput. And then rapid technology adoption is very important in terms of being able to provide that business agility. And we think about data center awareness as how do we fit into a modern rack scale deployment where you might have racks at a time arriving in the data center? How does the storage manage failure domains and networking and the rest? And then last, that predictive operations and machine learning uh, is absolutely critical to the uh, infrastructure and making sure that the decisions that were made are being kept by the infrastructure and any problems can be uh, dealt with very, very quickly. So as we start thinking about, you know, how do we build this? How do we deliver it? You know, first we support a wide variety of ecosystems and, and operating systems from bare metal, uh, VMs across VMware OpenStack, CloudStack, containerization technologies, Docker, uh, Kubernetes, LXC, and then we do this using industry standard protocols. We don't have a, a custom client footprint like a lot of other solutions require. 
We use standardized SCSI, IP-based networks, and we use the S3 protocol for delivering uh, object services. And the way we built the technology is you uh, federate together, scale out a number of, of uh, Fujitsu servers um, or other x86 servers, and the media that's in those servers really dictates the performance. So we talk about being able to deliver uh, Optane and ZSSD. This is cutting-edge technology from, from Intel. Um, we can deliver NAND and uh, NVMe or, or SATA-based flash. We can also plug in future protocols and, uh, excuse me, future media types as we see the market uh, change and respond. And then last, we can also support legacy hard drives. So it really creates an entire fabric worth of, of storage capabilities uh, that we can manage, and we can do this across multiple sites well uh, in the form of metro clusters and other things. And we call, and we, we base this all on a, that scale-out architecture. So some of the top use cases for the Deterra technologies. So we look at block storage for Tier 1 applications. These are the traditional applications with requirements around performance and availability uh, that, that the, the higher end of the, the enterprise array market is serviced. We can also provide database acceleration. We've had a maniacal focus on performance in our platform and have uh, world-class latency uh, for these applications. So whether it's a relational database like a, a MS SQL or Oracle or even the NoSQL environment, Cassandra or MongoDB, uh, we can support those from one piece of software, from one platform built on uh, Fujitsu servers. We can also support enterprise VMware virtualization environments. Many of the initial cloud projects were based on VMware, uh, and we can support those environments. Containers running on Kubernetes. As we look at the transition from sort of traditional IT to uh, microservices, Kubernetes plays a large part in that. What we love about Kubernetes is it's very policy-based and so is the Deterra system. So it's a very nice synergy between the technologies. And then we have a number of cloud service providers, uh, folks who are offering services to their customers who are looking for a dynamic, scale-out, very agile platform to manage their version of EBS or their block services internally. And then last, we look at a lot of SaaS vendors, people who are providing software as a service, um, who are looking to modernize their data centers to get those cost benefits. So, you know, as we look at the, the features and capabilities of the Deterra system, you know, what the data automation really means is around understanding the application requirements, building policies around that, and being able to optimize the way the system responds to those policies. Just a quick example, because it's such an, a, a fascinating, important topic. Um, when we look at a, a modern data center and what users are trying to do or, or our customers are trying to do around collapsing data silos, um, they still have different requirements for their applications. They do have different classes. They have different price points, if you want to, for their, uh, for their storage needs. So a uh, production Oracle deployment might be very valuable to the enterprise, and they might want to have uh, three copies of, of data protection. They might want to have a very uh, large amount of performance, whereas the test dev infrastructure or maybe general purpose compute, they would look at something that is uh, maybe two-copy reliability, Within the Deterra system, all of those controls become uh, policy. So you set the policy when you deploy the application across the durability, the performance, the uh, data protection level. All of those things become policies. And now as your users consume the system, whether it's self-service or traditional ticketed, uh, it's very easy to apply those policies to the volume. And really what that gives us is the ability to do uh, continuous and, and, and rapid optimization, and if there's any kind of fault self-healing, it's a very powerful uh, capability that's, uh, that Deterra delivers. And as I said, we had a maniacal focus on performance. So we can deliver uh, at scale millions of IOPS, and we can deliver very, very low latencies. Now, one of the, the great things about working with Fujitsu is when customers buy our technology, they get to choose what they purchase. Did I purchase an NVMe flash server? Did I purchase a hybrid server? Those have different price points. And as technology changes, they'll continue to have different uh, price points, and, and uh, the newer technologies will become older technologies, and newer technologies will come in for those. But the point is, with our architecture, we can unlock the power that's available in these, the very latest storage media and deliver that back to the applications while still being able to op offer optimized price on things like 
uh, be able to consume hard drives for the workloads that, that can use that. And now it goes back to that rapid technology adoption. It's very easy for us to uh, onboard new technology into our system. Uh, it, and it's something we'd be uh, very happy to talk about in, in further depth with people uh, after the webinar about how we've built the system where we do things like shared nothing. So every node that you add to the system uh, is a brand new node and has no relation to the previous nodes. A lot of the traditional and first generation software defined, the first one that you deploy uh, dictates what all the other ones look like. And that is not a, a limitation that Deterra has. And then we start talking about data center awareness. And this is a, a lot of fun for us because uh, we have been able to integrate into some of the most advanced networking technologies that modern data centers are, are deploying around routing everything. And Deterra can even participate in the routing fabric as an endpoint uh, via BGP. So this is another area where our technology excels and allows us to deliver uh, customers unique capabilities to have, say, one server per rack and be able to scale that out to hundreds of racks. Uh, and be able to, to float data services and support their infrastructure and really target where the data lives uh, inside the data center across uh, even, uh, even very large deployments. And then last, we talk about the predictive operations. You know, uh, most customers are thinking about how they can better use their machine data. We generate a lot of information. We bring that information back as well as process it locally. And we can understand how we can improve the the, the policies to get a better result. And some of that is done automatically and some of it uh, is done in, in concert with the administrator. But what's, what's really important about these predictive operations and we start talking about optimizing costs is understanding what do I buy next? If you think about how flexible our architecture is, if I've bought a bunch of hybrid nodes where I've got disk and flash working together, do I need to buy another hybrid or does it make sense to buy a flash node? These are very good questions that predictive operations allows our customers to understand what's going to have the best impact uh, on their infrastructure and how best do they spend their dollars. Very, very powerful stuff. So as we talk about the, the features and technology that, that Deterra brings, we, we operate in a scale-out model. As you build these servers together and, and the system grows over time, uh, one of the major problems with storage deployments is this concept of a forklift upgrade. After five years, the, the heads are using old processors, my disks are old, uh, it's time to get something new. That triggers a lot of work in most enterprises. They evaluate new vendors, they reevaluate what they're looking for in a solution. With the Deterra technology, that is no longer how our customers operate. Because they can constantly be moving older technology out and moving newer technology in, because we are a scale-out architecture, it means that they never need to forklift to preserve their data. It really provides an incredible amount of freedom for that data to exist, irrespective of the physical hardware. So today, as we look at the, the Fujitsu uh, Primergy line, and they bring out their, their technologies, and then we look to the future with the advancements from Intel, both on media and processors and others, Deterra customers can consume those advancements very, very quickly. And over time, could transition over that five, seven years from a deployment of current server technology to a deployment of uh, server technology five years from now without any disruption in the application. Very, very important. And that capability also allows us to avoid lock-in. You're not locked into a particular choice around media or models. Um, all of that flexibility and agility comes from the platform. As we start talking about the storage media and the capabilities there, as we look at what the difference between a hard drive, where under load you're looking at maybe a six millisecond uh, response time, um, if you look at, a, uh, at an NVMe device, you're looking at maybe 80 microseconds. That is a very, very big difference. That is a challenging problem for a lot of storage systems to manage and cope with those different media types. The Deterra technology is already proven to unlock the performance of the next generation of Flash, the Intel Optane and the Samsung Zeus is D-Flash. So it really gives that freedom to customers to ask, what do I need for my applications? What's going to impact my business the, the best? Do I need two terabytes of, of Intel Optane? How do I bring that on board? In the Deterra system, those things are possible. In other legacy systems, that you, you simply can't do that without a major uh, impact to the applications. We talk about service levels. This is the, the policy concept where 
each volume that is created can be optimized to the workload. It's, it's very rare to find a platform that can support traditional Tier 1 applications like an Oracle database or a MySQL database where when those technologies were designed, they expected the infrastructure to provide resilience, but also be able to manage the, the technologies around Cassandra and Mongo that were designed for an Amazon with a three nines reliability uh, and a scale-out architecture. The Deterra platform can actually manage both of these through those policies, and it makes it very easy to dynamically tune the, the IOPS, the uh, snapshot schedules, all of those become policies, and you can very easily move them around between different volumes or adjust over time. Uh, we like to say that the cost of a mistake in the Deterra system is very, very low, because if, if a mistake is made, all you have to do is just adjust the policy. And then we talk about multi-tenancy capability. As we think about these different workloads all coming together under the same infrastructure, how do we fence them off from each other? How do we make sure that my test dev infrastructure never impacts my production infrastructure? And we have those technologies around quotas and other things that we can do to ensure that these, uh, these uh, environments are segregated uh, all the way down to the network level. A uh, lot of technology there to provide that. And, and when you put it all together, you, you eliminate that data silo from a physical perspective, and you really move it into that logical concept where I do want to contain and constrain my workloads, but I don't want to have that happen on physical boundaries so that as I grow my system, I can grow it seamlessly and, and transparently. And then the last is the automation. The, the automation topic is incredibly important to every enterprise that we talk to. Uh, there's an old adage of do more with less. And I think the reality is that you, you get less with less. And so automation is seen as an incredibly important way of allowing organizations to dramatically increase their data management capability without having to dramatically increase their, their internal resources. As the, as the systems become more dense, uh, as we see larger hard drives, as we see larger flash devices, as, as Fujitsu engineers uh, more... Uh, capacity into their systems, being able to automate the infrastructure, to do that self-healing, to route around problems, and to be able to continually optimize to adjust to the workloads without having to have human intervention is absolutely key as you start looking at the, the challenges in, in data that's happening in the modern enterprise. If historically people have managed uh, terabytes of data as we see new technologies being adopted and new capabilities that the business is demanding, that terabytes could go to petabytes. How do organizations deal with that without a major investment by investing in technology like Datera? So as we talk about what we can do feature-wise, you know, we can offer different performance tiers. We can offer the ability to do snapshots and consistency groups. Um, we can do network isolation. We offer technologies around compression and deduplication in a scale-out architecture. We can do encryption at rest, thin provisioning, uh, zero-copy clones, metro cluster. Uh, this is just a sampling of those enterprise features that Tetera can offer, but we've built a very rich product that can provide a lot of capability. And last, we start talking about who is using this technology. We have a, a lot of leaders, thought leaders in the industry have adopted us. Uh, some of them have asked us not to share their names, and, and we respect that, um, one of which is a travel aggregator, and they have uh, adopted Deterra uh, as a primary storage platform uh, to deliver lower latency, to deliver automated operations. Another is the uh, Ultimate Software Group, which is a healthcare management software. Um, they have a large uh, SaaS offering, and they selected Deterra to be part of the storage for that offering. Uh, there's a global airline that was looking at a variety of different use cases and really modernizing their infrastructure away from traditional uh, large uh, array technologies and wanting to get more software defined to drive that agility, to be able to quickly adopt to uh, container projects. Uh, and they sought Deterra to achieve that. And then we worked with a company called Mirai Global. Uh, they were a large customer of a particular vendor. They consumed four separate solutions from that vendor across Flash, across uh, data replication, uh, different tiers and, of, and different types of storage, and we've replaced it all. And we moved in a virtualization environment, uh, delivering the performance for Microsoft SQL 
but also providing the capacity opportunity uh, for their other workloads from a, a single piece of software running on industry standard servers. And last is Packet. Uh, Packet.net is a, a fantastic service provider, really pioneered the use of bare metal uh, in a cloud environment, uh, and has been expanding their, their business into the edge cloud world. Uh, Packet selected Deterra to provide their EBS, their block storage solution, uh, because the, the uh, founders of Packet recognized very early they needed to have that service offering, but that's not Packet's core value proposition. And so we've worked very closely with Packet over the years to deliver and expand their, their uh, block storage solution. So to summarize, Deterra can re revolutionize your data operations. As we start thinking about the complexities of storage, uh, and especially the, the growth of storage in the uh, enterprise space, we see that the uh, opportunities around the procurement, the planning, the deployment, the servicing, the operations, the retirement, all of these aspects that uh, data center operators and their architects need to, to address, all of these are major pain points with data at scale. And with the Deterra solution, we allow you to procure your storage based on servers, based on uh, industry standard primary G servers. We change the planning cycles from having to do vendor evaluation constantly to selecting the nodes that you need to have for the workloads you want to support. And you can do that dynamically. We make the retirement aspect incredibly simple. There's one button in the user interface, decommission a node. The system automatically and non-disruptively moves all the data off of that particular storage node uh, and turns it off, waiting for its replacement. Uh, the servicing, the administration, the deployment models with Deterra are all incredibly simplified through the use of automation uh, in our software. We take a lot of those burdens off of the uh, customers deploying our software. So that concludes our section. Um, I'm going to hand it back over to Tom for Q&A. Um, are there any, uh, any questions? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Richard. That's fascinating. And yes, we do. We do, in fact, have questions popping up here, um, and I'll just handpick some real quick. Hopefully, we can get through the majority of them. The uh, first one that, that came in um, says, explain about layer three networking. No one has that in software-defined storage? Yeah, so, you know, uh, this was a technology that we offered um, that I would say uniquely. But of course, as technology goes, uh, you know, others may be adopting it. So what we're talking about is, is the use of routing inside the data center. Um, just to spend a, a couple seconds on this, the traditional traffic pattern uh, was very much what we call north-south, where the data would come into the data center, it would be processed by one server, and it would leave the data center. That's sort of the classic model. And what we've seen is a shift to what's called leaf spine or CLOS network, um, where you're optimizing for the computer systems, the, the services to talk to each other. And as you start looking at that model, and you start to wonder, how am I going to take my virtualization environment where I've got you know, heavyweight VMs with single IP addresses, and I'm going to break that down into microservices. Or I need to scale to, you know, from, from tens of terabytes to tens of petabytes. How am I going to manage my network at scale? And, and the hyperscalers like Amazon and, and Facebook and Google have really led the way and, and published papers on how you can take this, this, this BGP concept that powers the entire Internet and that routing concept that, that makes the Internet so resilient and bring that into the data center to manage this explosion of IPs, to manage the scale, and in some cases provide better, uh, better security. And so that's just an industry trend. And some of our customers, like Packet, for example, that's how their entire infrastructure operates. When you get a bare metal server from Packet, you get a very small subnet on your server for that port, and everything that happens beyond that is routed. And so when Packet looked at our solution, they said, hey, can you guys do this too? And we evaluated and found very quickly we could. And so we implemented that technology that allows the Deterra system, as it's moving resources around, to advertise those resources into the routing fabric. And we've seen very similar technology uh, being deployed in the container world and in the OpenStack world uh, under the, this uh, uh, project uh, Calico is one example. Kube Router has this capability too. 
And so we're seeing this trend where if I'm managing data center operations and multi-site data operations at scale, uh, operators are increasingly looking toward proven technologies like BGP as a way of, of making sure those services are always reachable no matter where they are in the data center, and, and Datera can integrate into that infrastructure. Terrific. Okay, great. Uh, another question here. This is, this is for Mr. McCormick. Um, question is, does Primergy, the Primergy line of service, support different types of storage, both flash and traditional? Oh yeah, I wondered if someone would ask that, and and probably there's a follow-on question as well around uh, around networking. As uh, as Sarah said, I mean the whole point of the solution is to be able to support multiple drive types and drive performances, multiple network types and different performance areas. And Primergy supports all of that. So the simple answer is yes, um, but really it's the decision and the tuning of which type of storage device, which type of network card you want to get best features out of it, but as Bill will tell you, he protects a lot of that with the software to make sure that you can really extract, uh, hopefully he's going to nod his head in a second and say yes, and extract the best possible performance out of the devices no matter what you've got. Uh, but certainly in the Primergy itself, specific to that question, you do have a range of traditional storage devices and modern flash devices that are fully supported in the platform. Yes, absolutely. Terrific. Thank you, Richard. All right, let me have a look here. Um, okay, when these are combined, what kind of performance can I expect to see? Perhaps that's a question for both of you, but Bill, if you could take a stab at that first. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and Richard's 100% uh, right around the, the different media and the different characteristics. And uh, as a partner, Fujitsu has a, a wide support of the, the media devices that we want to that we want to see in these servers. Um, you know, let me start with saying that uh, not all devices are created equal. Um, if we look at the hard drive universe, um, that's a pretty well understood technology, and we're seeing a shift away from the small form factor devices. Uh, it's pretty much exclusively the 7200 RPM uh, larger capacity drives. But there's not a, a massive variation that, that I've seen uh, in the hard drive space. The flash world is very different. And um, a, if you look at the flash world, these, these, the traditional SATA and NVMe devices are made of this NAND flash. There's a number of producers who create this. Uh, in a lot of cases, the, the same production facility that makes the NAND flash on the uh, for, for the enterprise is also making it for your phone. As you think about all the cell phones that are out there and their storage capabilities. But what we've seen is a wide variety of, of capabilities and quality uh, in the NAND flash market from, you know, obviously consumer grade and so forth. The Terra focuses on the, the drives that are really enterprise grade where they can deliver power fail, safe, um, where they deliver an expected performance uh, under the kinds of workloads that Datera puts the drives under. And we've done a lot of work in our file systems and, and technology to uh, treat the flash as appropriately as possible, but we still see a wide variety in the open marketplace. Working with Fujitsu, we have a list of qualified uh, media, qualified servers, and this is one of the really important uh, aspects of where uh, we think software defined should be, and, and there's a statement I like to use that says, while any server could be a storage server, not every server should be a storage server. And the idea there is that you want to be thinking about, you know, what are you optimizing from a cost perspective? You know, what is that media? What are the processors? Um, working with, with Fujitsu, we've put together a standard set of configurations that cover both of those topics to make it much easier for customers to consume. And so going back to the, the, the core question around performance, we have performance published in our data sheet um, typically what you see in, a, in an, uh, the, the metrics is a small block 4K, 730. Um, the the Datera system can deliver uh, 70,000, 80,000 IOPS on a per server basis on that metric. Um, if you start looking at throughputs, these numbers change. Uh, as you start looking at different block sizes, the number change. But that's our job to do and to work with customers to understand um, which server type, because a, a server with disk is going to behave differently than a server with flash, and work through what are the requirements, what are the cost points, and deliver that solution to the customer. I don't know if you want to add anything, Richard. 
Yeah, excellent answer uh, to that one. I think that choice from both vendors and from Tangent, the key for you on the phone is really to get us involved if you can uh, up front, allow us to come and help you with those decision making, of course. As, as he just said, a lot of that's covered by the software and really protected from your hardware decision making. The idea of the software stack here is to really keep, keep those decisions away from you on a day-to-day -day basis, but it absolutely is worth that planning. And we've got a lot of good folks here all over California and all over the rest of America who are very keen to come and uh, help you with that decision for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually this is probably, we're getting a fair few questions coming in here about support for multiple generations of servers. Um, and I can speak uh, to the customers that we support, Tangent supports, uh, the hundreds of customers that, that are running uh, perhaps slightly older Fujitsu servers, but nonetheless still as stable, still as solid. But as they start modernizing their data center, how can they, uh, how, how can they sort of dip their toe in the water, so to speak? Um, and um, and how does how does Daycare specifically cope with um, with future proofing or how installing you know if you were to install new Fujitsu servers into existing environments for folks that don't want to go out and rip and replace everything? Yeah, no, that's um, you know we see this all the time. It's 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 new technology. Um, most deployments today are not based on software defined scale out. Um, and so we tend to start small uh, with each of the customers. And that's the real power of the Deterra solution. We talk about this concept of continuous availability. And the idea is that we fully expect our first engagement to be small, where we're dealing with a proof of concept environment. Maybe it's a handful of nodes. Maybe it's you know, another vendor. But as the customer adopts and, and, and realizes the power of our technology, and moves it into production and starts to expand, that's where the Deterra solution really starts to shine because, as I said, we're a shared nothing architecture. The next one you plug in does not need to look like the one you just had. And so um, what we find is our customers are looking at the marketplace and understanding who offers the best support, who offers the best uh, capabilities within the server, and they're making those selections. And our technology provides that freedom so that even a customer that was running, say, Dell uh, technology uh, would be able to onboard Fujitsu technology into that exact same infrastructure and transparently and non-disruptively to the application migrate from uh, one server class and technology to another and really do that at their pace. This wouldn't be necessarily that, that rip and replace. Um, they would really be able to do it on the, the pace that is best for their business. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Okay, good. A couple more here. Um, this one's actually for me. <laughs> um, and they're asking um, if Tangent would be a one-stop shop. And I, I would just say that uh, Tangent's in a fairly unique position. Um, we've had a, a relationship with, with Fujitsu for, for the better part of a decade. Um, so our engineers are very familiar with um, with Fujitsu's line of servers uh, and, and other solutions. Uh, and what we've done a, a, a good job of doing is integrating the software and hardware components and delivering it, as I mentioned, as an integrated solution. And use Richard's analogy, one throat to choke, um, is, is a good one. We, we stand by it. Obviously, because of our relationships with Fujitsu and Deterra, we have um, their full backing and resources to be able to escalate as needed. Uh, and we're local. We're here. We're based in, in California. Uh, we have feet on the ground. We can come in and help scope, integrate, support. So that's, that's really where we fit in. Um, as we ra wrap up here, um, there's going to be questions around pricing, um, which are, uh, might be a little difficult to really nail down on this, uh, on this call. But uh, an interesting question here for, for you, Richard, is, how do we get our hands on one? Uh, and, and I paraphrased, but um, are there POC systems available? Yeah, so, so uh, as, as Deterra said, um, we, we do know that people sometimes want to start with new technology or new ideas small, so we fully support that. Proof of concept systems, as we call them, are absolutely available. And even though I didn't really give much detail in my presentation of the kind of models in the range, you saw some crazy pictures. We've got some very low-end uh, units that could go in real small into a customer's existing rack, 
uh, environment and to much larger units as well. So I'll say, yeah, absolutely, Tom, yes. We would love to do proof of concept with any of your customers who've joined us here on this call. So not only can they have pizza, but they can also leave knowing if they want to <laughs> test it out and find out what's going on. Absolutely, uh, ourselves to Terra on our note tangent would love to take them up uh, with that opportunity to do that with a size solution to meet their needs, either starting relatively small and expanding or starting in the mid-range. Either way, we're up for both. No problem, Tom. Good question. Yeah. Terrific, terrific. All right, and then um, I, I want to squeeze one more in here because I believe we've got a, a little bit of time. And um, a, a question came in, and actually a comment, uh, which was great conversation. Fujitsu and Deterra sound like a, a strong match. Um, the question is, and you're, you're going to get these, is how or is this product, product similar to Scale I.O.? Um, and how, uh, how, would be, how would Deterra be superior? Um, slightly loaded question, but I, I think you can take that, Bill. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we get this all the time. And, and you know, Scale.io is a, is a good product. Um, it, it was designed to deliver a large-scale uh, data storage facility uh, based on, uh, you know, I wasn't in the design meetings, but they wanted to bring it to market based on uh, so, some interesting design principles. One is that the uh, solution has uh, a custom client. So there, we could, I'd be happy to, to take this offline as to the pros and cons of doing that. Um, but it, it is a challenge for some people, and it, it does make ecosystem integration interesting. Deterra supports, um, uh, Deterra supports standard protocols. So we use iSCSI. You've got a, a quality IP network. You can attach to us, no problem. Deterra really focused on bringing that agility the ability to support different types of servers very easily within the infrastructure. Um, that's something that historically Scale.io has struggled with. Um, Deterra can support compression and deduplication. Um, data reduction technology is something that historically Scale.io has, has struggled to bring to market. So again, I, I think it's a great product. Um, they've done uh, very well in the marketplace. But as, as we talk to customers who use that technology, um, we get different responses. Uh, but they're all very interested in what Deterra does because they recognize the operational agility around being able to not just have different servers, but even supporting different media. Uh, as you think about when I purchase a legacy product, I buy uh, the disks from them. So if, if a disk failed in my traditional storage array, I bought a disk in their, in their housing, with its color and their sticker on it, and I didn't have to think about it. When, you, when you're moving to the software-defined world and you're buying server technology, um, it's great to have the option of saying, look, this server failed. It's been two years. Do I really need to go back to my partner like Fujitsu and say, I want to buy the older architecture? Like I, or, or to say, I have to buy the older architecture. Uh, when with our technology, customers can say, look, I can start my migration to newer tech. I can go out and buy the latest server, plug it in, and the Deterra control plane is smart enough to work with the data plane to understand how to balance the I.O., how to place the resources appropriately to not only maximize the new equipment, but also be able to operate on the old equipment. So, um, you know, as I said, Scale.io is a good product. Uh, we, we wish Dell all the luck with, with that technology. But in our conversations, uh, there's clear differentiation between uh, – what Deterra is trying to achieve and what Scale.io is trying to achieve. Uh, and, and we really do enjoy talking to customers who have Scale.io deployed. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, looks like um, we're, we're running up against the clock here. Um, so uh, a, a few reminders. I, I, I've got a few messages saying that, um, that pizza might not have been uh, delivered as, as planned, so we'll certainly make that up to everyone, uh, either with some sort of a gift card or a pizza, <laughs> another pizza, but we'll certainly get back to you and make sure, make sure you, you're taken care of there. Also, remember to download, uh, go into the, into the attachments and download uh, the information briefs on both um, Deterra and Fujitsu. Um, and lastly, I, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody uh, for joining us today. Hopefully it was an informed conversation. Um, special thanks to, to Richard and Bill. Um, it's fascinating stuff, and, and we provided a wealth of information to everyone, and I'm sure 
there are going to be many conversations to be had from, from this group of folks. Um, so with that, thank you, Richard. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Have a fantastic day, and we'll talk to everybody soon. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Bill.